I'm on Highway 400 between Gainesville and Dahlonega, Georgia, headed to the Castleberry Bridge. This past winter, I was doing an internet search on caves in North Georgia and came across something called the Historic Old Mine Tunnel. This place interested me and is what I'm headed out to find and explore today. I had never heard of this tunnel before, and I'd never been on the Etowah River. So I looked on Google Maps to get a lay of the land and see if I could pinpoint where the tunnel was. An article I read online described the tunnel location as being just downstream from the Castleberry Bridge. So with this information, I assumed the tunnel would be located here or here in one of these two switchbacks. But later discovered that it's actually 4.5 miles downstream here. Anyway, my goal was to find it and to see what it was all about. And anything else I discovered along the way would add to the adventure. When I got to the water, the adventure was already on. No doubt I was going to have to ride this chopper. An old thigh master, some handlebars, some bungee cord, and some rope all knotted together into a death trap of fun. If it breaks, I'll slap on a tourniquet and limp on home. It felt good to be in the water and on the water, going where the river goes. My interest in caves in the North Georgia mountains led me here to the Etowah River in search of the historic old mine tunnel. So what I was seeing high in the trees above the river was particularly beautiful and fascinating.
Wow, incredible. So many curiosities were flying through my mind here. Would this place have been home to someone a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago? The surface of the rock in here on the ceiling was scalloped and textured, like rock that had been exposed to moving water for thousands and thousands of years. So at some point millions of years ago, the Etowah River was up here, or this rock was down there, or both. Truly amazing, and too confusing for my little mind to comprehend. In comparison, this historic old mine tunnel I'm going to see is just a baby and man-made. Apparently it was cut through the mountain in the early 1930s by a mining company to divert the river so the original riverbed could be mined for gold. I'm excited to see what it looks like today. Hopefully I'll find it. When I got to the places I had marked on Google Maps, it was obvious my guesstimates were wrong. Beautiful scenery, but the tunnel must be farther downstream. And that was fine with me. This river had my full attention. The Etowal and the Dahlonega area have a history rich in gold, so I wasn't surprised to see that modern day prospectors are still working the river. A couple of miles into my journey, another huge rock outcropping caught my attention. Climbing up a steep hill and seeing big scratch marks on the ground and a black dark opening in the rocks behind it stopped me in my tracks and had me looking for an exit plan in case I needed it. I would either run or climb depending on what came out and how fast it came out. The coast seemed to be clear, so I cruised on by.
This whole forest is filled with incredible natural beauty. And though I hadn't found the tunnel yet, the journey so far has been amazing. It's early July and 96 degrees today, summer in the south, my favorite time of year. The river's a little low in some sections, so I got out and walked it. The smooth round pebbles felt good on my feet. <laughs> Maybe I should have been looking for gold. Nah. What was particularly cool is as soon as I got away from the bridge where I put in, the only sounds I could hear were the forest and the sounds of the river flowing. And it occurred to me how rare it is to hear this. No cars, no 18-wheelers, trains, airplanes, dogs, machinery. About four and a half miles downstream from Castleberry Bridge, the river opens up. And the water flows strongly to the left and to the right. I felt sure this was where the tunnel is. Yep, there it is. The water flow speeds up here and it pulled me straight in to darkness. Coming right in from such a bright sunny day, the tunnel literally is black dark inside, except for the white dot two tenths of a mile away. The rock walls and river bottom inside are fairly jagged and uneven, so the kayak bangs around a lot in the dark. About two-thirds of the way in, there's an air hole drilled straight up to the trees and sky above. Every sound inside is eerie and echoed, and water drops on me from the ceiling. I think it's water.
After the air shaft, the white dot at the end of the tunnel starts getting bigger fast, and the sound of heavy rushing water gets louder and louder. Wow, <laughs> very cool. Every bit as incredible as I was expecting. As my head is spinning with excitement, it occurs to me that my car is sitting at the Castleberry Bridge four and a half miles back upstream. And I came on this journey alone. It gets dark in four hours. The journey back upstream is its own adventure, very, very physically demanding and also highly rewarding. I made it back to the bridge just before dark.